It's a beautiful day. God has made it for you and me. I don't know if you think about it, but I, every morning, said, Lord, when I open my eyes, I see the daylight. I go, it's your grace. Thank you for a new day. Many of us will never know how many more days we have. But as we do, we need to always acknowledge this, the grace of God. We were singing. Did you enjoy it? the worship time? It's your grace. It's your grace. What would I do without God's grace? It's his grace that we sing to, that we love to, that we thank him, that we praise him, and that we lift his name on high anytime you and I speak of the glorious God we have. God is so good. Worshiping, what an amazing worship. I don't know if you, if you consider singing, Pastor Elijah uses this phrase, with, an, with understanding, with knowing what you're saying. Don't just sing. Don't just raise your voice high. Think of what you're singing. And, and also when we do that, it's when the presence of God comes and takes out our burdens, our preoccupations, our, our requests. You know, God abides in the praises of his people. And so you church are wonderful at that. Those online watching with us, Lord bless you. Lord be with you. Enjoy and thank God that we have many avenues to keep in, uh, connecting with God and his church and those that love you at Living Word. It's always my love and prayers for you people. All of you are special to me. God bless you today. Amen. Listen, God, you're with us today online. Those of you online, we're so glad that you're watching online. You know, the vision of Living Word or the mission of Living Word is connecting people to God, to each other, the community, and the world. And one of the ways that, that we reach, connect with the world is through the missionaries uh, uh, that we support all around the world. Uh, this church, and because of your faithfulness, because of your giving, we literally have over 40 missionaries that we support, you know what, around the world, 40-something, 40 46, I think it is. And that's because of your faithfulness, that's because of your giving, and uh, God is doing some amazing things not only among us, but around the world. And I, I don't say it enough, but I want to say thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your giving. It allows us to continue to uh, fulfill our commitments to our missionaries and, you know what, to the work that God has called us to do. You know what, today we're honored to have one of those missionaries with us, him and his family. His name is Zach and Danya Ricks. You know, that sounds like a stage name. It sounds like a made-up, you know, uh, name. Like a, that's something like, a, you know what, like a spy would use or a singer or a... You know what, a star, a movie star, and he is a movie star. He looks like a movie star. But Zach Ricks, and uh, we're honored that he's here. He's a missionary to Honduras, and uh, he's going to tell you about his family that's here with him and some of the things that you have helped to make possible there in Honduras. Would you join me in giving a warm living word welcome to Zach, Danya, and their children, the Rickses. So good to be here with you all this morning, and, and uh, especially at this church, you guys mean so much to us back in 2019 you brought a team to Honduras uh, and we built two churches because of you and your giving and your faithfulness and your being willing to go uh, to two churches in one week and um, and and we're so so thankful uh, for your partnership uh, over there in Honduras uh, we often we talk to those uh, those pastors uh, that lead those churches those congregations and God is just doing some amazing things uh, those of you who went on that trip and those of you who, who helped send your team out uh, giving and, and funding those projects, just know that, that you made an eternal impact in Honduras, an eternal impact. You know, often, often when we're doing a construction project, it's easy to focus on the walls that we're putting up or the roof that we're putting on or, or, or the work that we're doing that week. But on the other, other side of all that work, on the other side of the, the sweat and the tears and the sacrifice, uh, there's lives that are being changed and discipled and families that are being won to the Lord and children that are being called into ministry all because of uh, your faithfulness here at Living Word. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for allowing us to be here, Pastor, and your wife. Thank you so much. Uh, this is my wife, Danya, and these are our three little princesses. This is Gabriella, who is eight, Sophia, who is seven, and then we have Rebecca, who is five. And uh, they, they, 
they, they enjoyed children's church so much in the first service, they said, Daddy, we're going again. So we're going to have to get them off here in a second but, so they can get back there. But before uh, church, when, when church ends today, please make sure you find us. We'd like to give you a prayer card. Uh, one of the things we get to do as missionaries and itinerate and travel around the church is, is raise up a, a prayer network that will lift us up in prayer each day and believe that God will protect us, that he'll keep us safe, that he'll open doors for us, and he'll help us to continue to reach the lost in Honduras. So please pick up that prayer card after service. Praise God. God's doing great things in Honduras. Amen. <laughs> Not only did Living Word help us build those two churches with the team that you sent, but if you saw towards the end of the video the drone footage of the construction project where it went up high and it didn't have a roof on it, but the walls of the church were on it, that's a, a, a church that during the pandemic that you all funded, that you helped us build, you, you sent the special offering. Give God a round, of a, a round of praise for that. In the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of, uh, of when things are, are, are tight financially, when, when, when there's a lot of uncertainties, you guys sewed into Honduras and the ministry there, and we just, uh, we just finished the last few details of the church there with the floor and the windows, and, and um, they're, they're putting a, a bathroom on the back, and it's just a great location. The team that was there with us, you'll remember that we had service in that community in a public school one of the nights uh, that you were there, and there was a yellow bus kind of parked out in the middle of this property and I, I said we're going to buy that piece of land by faith and we're going to build a church on it and uh, and that's exactly what happened God opened up the doors for us to buy the buy the land then you guys helped us fund the project and and uh, the church is growing doing wonderful the pastors are just so thankful so thankful uh, uh, El Pastor Mario and Pastor Asanya they, they, they said make sure you tell uh, Pastor Victor the, the everybody at Living Word thank you so much Thank you so much for, for the investment, the investment in Honduras and, and seeing lives changed. This morning, if you have your Bible, I'm going to invite you to open with me to the Gospel of Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. You know, one of the great calls that Jesus made to his disciples was to follow me and I will make you fishers of men. That's really what missions is all about, what the Great Commission is all about for each one of us to follow Jesus and for us to reach out into our communities and our neighborhoods and our schools to the people around us and, and win them to the Lord. That's what it, it, it means to be a fisher of men. To share the, the gospel with those around us. To share the hope that you and I have with those around us. To simply share our testimony. What God has done in our own lives. How he's set us free. How he's changed us. How he's filled us with hope. To share that with those around us. And, 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 and God is calling us. Each and every one of us to be fishers of men. We can't do it on our own. We need his help. Jesus said, I will make you fishers of men. And my challenge for each one of us today is to allow Jesus to make us fishers of men. To be empowered by his Holy Spirit so that we can go out into our communities, so that we can go out into the world and reach the lost. To make a difference. Luke chapter 5, we have the miracle of the great catch with the disciples it says this, one day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Genesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. 
Let's pray this morning. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity that you give us to come to your house, to worship you together, to spend time in your presence. And we ask this morning that your spirit will speak to our hearts, that you'll challenge us, Lord, and that we'll be changed by your word. We thank you in advance for all that you will do in your name. Amen. You know, when we talk about fishing, I think we all have our fishing stories. Let me see if anybody here has a fishing story. I know the guys especially, all the guys, we all have our own fishing story. Usually it's when we go home after, after fishing and we tell our wives, hey, we caught a big one today, and we say, is this big? And, and in reality, it was usually just like a little sardine, right? I remember one of my fishing stories, some friends, they said, Zach, Dania, come fishing with us. We're going to go out at night, and we, we're from Florida, and in Florida we have lots of alligators. And he said, come on, we're going to go fishing all night. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, this is when the alligators come out at night. But anyways, we went and we fished all night and we didn't catch anything. I felt like the disciples, man. We fished and fished and fished and nothing. We ate our snacks too quickly. Who knows, that's a bad thing to do. We were frustrated about three in the morning. You know, we said, hey, all right, let's wrap it up. It's time to go home. You know, they're not biting tonight. And right when we're getting, to tur- getting ready to turn the boat around, I hear from the other side of the boat, my wife, Daniel, she yells out. She says, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have something on the line. I'm thinking, oh, man. How can she catch a fish? And all us guys, we didn't catch anything. And she reels in a fish. And I said, all right, honey, you got one. Let's go. And she said, no, whoa, 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 whoa. We're, we're going to stay out here a little while longer. See if I can get another one. And like three or four times more, she just kept reeling them in we all have our fishing stories right but we're not we're not talking about fishing fish catching fish we're talking about being fishers of men winning the lost preaching the gospel to those around us keep your bibles open with me here in luke chapter 5 and i just want to highlight and Give some thoughts on the verses that we read. In verse 1, again, I'll read it. It says, One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Genesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. The people were hungry to hear from Jesus. I love how it says it in Spanish. It gives this impression that the people, they were like bumping into each other. They, were, they, 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 they wanted to hear the word of God and, and they, were just, they, were, they were just so ready. They were, they were crowding around and bumping into each other and this, had this desperation to hear from Jesus. And you know, we're living in a world that often seems upside down where there's many people that have hard hearts that don't want to hear from God. But in the middle of all that craziness throughout the earth, there's people that are hungry to hear from Jesus. There's people that are hungry to hear the message of truth that you and I can share with them. I mentioned the the church that we're planting there in in the Garifuna community of Bahamar. The Garifuna is one of the ethnic groups in Honduras. They've been there for well over 200 years. Uh, They came from the island of St. Vincent. There was a shipwreck off the island of St. Vincent with African slaves. And and those African slaves, they lived on St. Vincent. They intermarried with the Carib Indians that lived there. And their offspring became the Garifuna people. Eventually, they made it to the north coast of Honduras. They have their own language. They have their own customs, their own their own food and and very difficult communities to work in many of those communities are heavy in in witchcraft and and, and animistic beliefs and 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 god has opened up a door through the pandemic through the hurricanes to plant a church in this community and we began meeting under a mango tree who knows that god can show up under a mango tree we eventually, we put what we call a champa. It's, it, it's a makeshift roof with palm, palm branches. And I remember one Saturday, we're driving out. It's about an hour and 20 minutes away from where we live. We're driving out, and I, it's just raining, just pouring rain. Back in Florida, they say it's raining cats and dogs. I don't know where they got that from, but, but it was raining. And I told my buddy, I said, man, nobody's showing up today. It's going to be muddy. Our little makeshift roof, it's not perfect. There's going to be, there's going to be some leaks. But I said, let's go. Let's just go see what, see, see, see what happens. 
And I remember it's pouring rain. There's a little bit of fog, and I'm, 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 I'm driving down this dirt road, and I can see in the distance our little champa. And through the rain, I can just see how it's full with people. Despite the rain, despite the, 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 the climate, despite all the, all the mud that they had to walk through to get there, despite all of these things, the cold, they're there ready and hungry to hear the word of God. Desperate to hear. And it's the same thing. There's people that are around you in your communities, in your family. They might seem tough on the outside. They might seem like they don't want anything to do with God. But deep down inside, there's a void. There's a hole. And there's something inside of them that's crying out for you to share the hope of glory that you have through Jesus with them. God, He's left us with the mandate to take the message of Jesus to the uttermost parts of the earth. Whether it's in Chino, whether it's in Honduras, whether it's in Asia or Africa or Europe, we have to be about the Father's business. Look with me again in verse 2 and 3. It says, He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boats. Jesus, he saw that at the water's edge, there were a couple of boats. There were people that were washing their nets. I think about today's church in a general way, and, and, and I think about many Christians, and, and I say to myself, God, I don't want to have my boat parked at shore. God, with what you've called me to do, with what you've called me to do, God, I don't want to be at the shore just hanging out, washing my nets, looking and seeing what everybody else is doing. I want to be about your business. I want to answer your call. In verse 4, the words that Jesus says to Simon Peter are so powerful. And I truly believe that God is speaking this to us today. He says, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out in the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. God, he looks at us wherever we're at in life, whatever we're going through, whatever he is calling you to do in your situation, in your context, whatever is happening in your family, in your marriage, whatever it might be, he's looking at you and he says, listen, don't stay on shore. Don't stay at the shore washing the nets. I've got great things in store for you. I want to use your life. And he says, put out into deep water. Put out into deep water. Jesus, he was telling Simon Peter and the other disciples that they no longer could stay in the shallow end where everything was comfortable, where everything was easy, but instead they had to push out into deep water. You know, it's, it's easy to stay in the shallow end. It's easy to stay in our comfort zone. It's easy to stay in a position where we don't have to take risks. It's easy to, to stay in, 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 in that, 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 that zone where everything's okay, where we know how everything's going to work out, where we know all the details of, 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 of the steps we're going to take, where, where, where we don't have to exercise too much faith. But God, He's calling us out into the deep end. He's calling us out from that comfort zone. He's calling us out from the shore so that you and I can be used by Him. Think about what he might be speaking to you today. Maybe for some time, God has been speaking to you. Maybe over the last few weeks, over the last few months, maybe in the, in the depths of the night, in the deep part of the night's sleep, God is speaking to you something. Maybe he's calling you to serve in some ministry within the church that, that needs a leader to, to step up and to, to help kids, to, to, to minister to the youth or to be an usher. I, I don't know what that might be. And, and God's saying, Push out in the deep water. 
Maybe, maybe, maybe you have a business idea in your mind and God has given it to you and, and you've been kind of wrestling with it. Should I, should I start this business? Should I not? Should I just stay put? And you're wrestling and God is saying, you know what? Push out into deep water. You know, I praise God for the, 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 the many missionaries that you all support here at, at Living Word. 40, how many is it, Pastor? 40? 46. That is so awesome. You're touching the world. But guess what? There's more lost people around the world. There's more missionaries to send out to the nations of the earth. We can't stay comfortable. We can't stay put. We have to push out into deep water because God wants to use us. Maybe God is calling you to be a missionary. Why not? Why can't, why can't God raise up missionaries from living word to go to some far off country to reach some people group that's never heard the gospel? Why not? Push out in the deep water. We have to be willing to go wherever the, the Lord asks us to go. I remember when, when God called us back to Honduras in 2014. I was a single missionary that went to Honduras when I was 19 years old. I, I moved there, met my wife. We got married, moved back to Florida. We we're on staff at a church outside of Orlando and, and comfortable doing good. And we had one of those moments that's really a God moment where you know that you know that you know that God has spoken to you. Have you ever had a moment like that? That it doesn't matter what anybody else has, has told you. It doesn't matter what anybody else says. They might say you're crazy or whatever. But you know that God has spoken to you. And we had one of those kind of moments. And, and God said, Zach, I'm calling you and your family back to Honduras. And that just started a snowball effect for us to work our way back to Honduras, to go through the process to become missionaries. And, 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 and God began to lead us to San Pedro Sula in the northern part, the second biggest city in the country. And, and I remember looking uh, at the news reports, looking online and hearing what other people would say about San Pedro Sula. And at that time, it was one of the most violent cities on earth. More murders per capita than any other place not counting war zones in the Middle East. And I remember the thoughts in my mind and what people would say, how could you take your wife and your three girls to live in San Pedro Sula, Honduras? How could you do that? And the fact of the matter is, is that God has called us there and he's told us, step out into deep water, push out into deep water and let down the nets. That's where he's called us and we have to be obedient to that call. In verse 5, we see the answer that Simon Peter gives Jesus after Jesus tells him, push out into deep water, let down the nets. Simon Peter really gives Jesus a two-part answer. The first response that he gives him in verse 5, it says, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. We've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. They fished all night. Imagine the tiredness. Their arms are worn out from fishing. They had already cleaned their nets. I imagine some of them were thinking, how can Jesus tell us to come and, 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 and push out into the deep and go fishing again? We just cleaned our nets. Couldn't he have told us before we cleaned them? Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. Some of us have had similar experiences. Some of us can identify pretty well with Peter's words. We work and we work and we work and we don't see the results that we wish we'd see. We serve, we reach out to people, we preach the word, but we don't see maybe the growth in the small group or the ministry or the church or whatever that we wish we'd see. In my business, I try and I try and I try to do this and I use different methods and, and different, different marketing tools or whatever and, and, and it doesn't bring in the income that I, I, I thought I'd experience. I'm tired. Some of us are, you know, God speaks to us and, and, and we give a similar response to Jesus. Jesus, I've tried it and I haven't succeeded. Through the pandemic, I think we've, we've all somewhat felt this way. Where we've had dreams that have been lost, projects that have been lost, things that we thought we were going to be able to do that we haven't been able to do. And, and, and through all of those feelings, we're like, Jesus, man, I'm tired. I'm worn out. I don't want to push out into the deep. I've tried this before. 
I haven't been successful. How can I do it again? We've all felt that way. We've all felt that way. But look at what Peter says after telling Jesus, Master, we've worked all night and we're tired. Look at what he says in the second part of verse 5. If you've got a pen, if you've got a highlighter, mark this verse in your Bible. This is a good one. It says, but because you say so. Those are powerful words, friends. After Peter says, man, I'm tired. I've tried this before. I haven't been successful. We fished all night. I'm worn out. But, but he knew that Jesus was speaking to him. And he says, but because you say so, Lord. Because you're telling me to do it. Because you're telling me to go. We went to Honduras not because somebody else put the idea in our mind and said, hey, this would be a good thing to do. No, but because you say so, Jesus will go. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. Peter was saying, I'm not going to trust in what I can do. I'm not going to have faith in my own strength and in who I am and in my knowledge of fishing and of this trade. I'm going to trust you, Jesus, in your word. Because you say so. It wasn't just anyone telling Peter to go out into the deep and throw out the nets. It was Jesus. When God, He tells us to do something, we can trust His voice. We can trust His voice. Again, I'll ask you, what is God speaking to you? Where is He leading in your life? Where is He taking you? Who is He challenging you to reach out to and share the love of Christ with? Who is he telling you to reach out to and bring to church next Sunday morning? I'll do it, Lord, not because it feels good, because many times God asks us to do stuff that's not, that does not feel good. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure it didn't feel good for the disciples after fishing and being tired to push out into deep water. But because you say so, Lord, I'll do it. Peter knew that before, the night before, when he didn't catch anything, he knew that he was out there on his own and his, and, and, and his other, other friends, his companions, the other disciples, they were fishing on their own and they didn't catch anything. But now he knows that Jesus is in the boat. You know, when Jesus is in our boat, everything changes. When Jesus is in the situation... Miracles can happen. Before, I did things in my own strength and I didn't get anywhere. But now Jesus is in the boat. And if Jesus is in the boat, miracles can happen. Verse 6, it says this. When they had done so. When they had done so. That shows us the obedience of the disciples. It shows us that Peter and the others... They didn't just stay there, hanging out, talking amongst themselves, spinning their fingers around and just saying, you know what, tomorrow we'll push out into deep water. They didn't say, you know what, next week, when the weather's a little better, we'll try this fishing thing again. It says, when they had done so. They obeyed what Jesus was asking them to do. The same thing, friends. I know it sounds so basic and so simple, so elementary, but in our lives, whatever God asks us to do, we have to obey Him. And the supernatural, the miracle, it followed the obedience of the disciples. The great catch that they brought in, it didn't happen without their cooperation. It didn't happen without them actually pushing out into the deep and throwing the nets and doing their part to obey the Lord. But when they obeyed God, when they obeyed Jesus, when they obeyed His instructions, they experienced a great miracle. And the same thing is true in our lives. 
When you and I are willing to obey God, when you and I are willing to hear His voice and obey Him and do what He calls us to do, and when we're willing to, to leave the shore behind, leave our comfort zone behind and push out into deep water and throw the nets out again, we will experience the miraculous in our lives too. We will experience a great catch, a great harvest of souls when we're willing to do our part. God, He always blesses our obedience. My mom, she used to have a couple of sayings about obedience. Does anybody else have moms that have their mom sayings? Maybe you're the mom with the sayings. I don't know. My mom always had a couple of sayings about obedience. She would say this. She would say, Zach, delayed obedience is disobedience. That means when, when she'd ask me to clean my room and I'd just stay home, playing video games, Say, I'll do it later, Mom. I'll get to it tomorrow. Or what do the kids say? They'll say, I'm going, I'm going, right? I don't know if your kids say that, right? I'm going, I'm going, and they're still there. I'm going, I'm going, and they're just sitting down. And I think about with God sometimes, when he asks us to do something, we tell God, God, I'm going. I am going to push out into the deep. I am going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going, God. I'm going. And we're still staying put. We're delaying and delaying and delaying. And when we delay our obedience, we're living in disobedience. What is God speaking to you? I, I pray and I hope as we finish today that when you go out of these, this, this church, when you leave the doors of the church, that you will make a decision and, and just resolve within yourself, God, I'm going to obey you right away. With whatever he's speaking to you. My mom, she would also say this. She would say, partial obedience is disobedience. That means when she asks me to clean my room and clean the bathroom, and I only clean my room but not the bathroom, that I disobeyed. And I think with God sometimes, we partially obey God. We say, God, I'll be, I'll, I, I will obey you in this and this and this, but Lord, this is too difficult. This is, it's, it's uncomfortable. This, it costs too much. This gets me out of my comfort zone. This. And we forget that when we make a decision to follow Jesus, when we say, I'm a Christian, I'm a disciple of Christ, we've, we've left our own desires behind, and it's no, it's no longer what we want or what we have planned. It's God, whatever you say, my answer is yes. Whatever you say, my answer is yes. I think about a few months ago when I sat down with Pastor Marcos Jordan. You saw the pastor that, that leads the deaf church. He was doing sign on the video. I sat down with him and he started the first deaf church in the country. He started the first school for deaf children in the country. Often uh, children with disabilities are so abused and neglected. They're marginalized and even though we don't work in deaf ministry, God has given us a heart for the marginalized, for the outcast, for kids that don't have any hope. And I remember sitting down with him and him saying, Zach, we, we, we were able to buy a piece of land. Is there any way you can help us build a school? And something jumped inside of my spirit where I just knew that the Lord was leading me to partner with him to, to build this school. And I said, we're going to do it. It's going to cost a lot, but it doesn't matter. We're going to step out in faith, and God will provide as we walk by faith. And that's what happens in life. God tells us to do something, but he doesn't show us all the details up, at, up front. He doesn't give us everything we need, whether it's resources or plans or strategies or whatever, at the beginning. As we walk by faith, God shows up and provides. And we have to do our part in simply saying, yes, Lord, I'll obey you. Verse 7, look with me. This is such a perfect example, illustration really of, of what missions is all about. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. This is after they pulled in the great catch. Their, their, uh, their, their nets began to break. And when they began to break, they called out, to the others. They signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. 
I say it's such a perfect example, illustration of missions because missions is not about any one person, any one missionary, any one pastor. It's, it's the, the, the church as a, as a whole saying, you know what? We're going to be involved in reaching the lost around the world. When, 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 when a church like yours sends, sends a funds during the middle of a pandemic, during the middle of a crisis, during the middle of, of economic uncertainty to say, you know what, we're going to sow into to, to the people there in, in, in Honduras, into this little community, and, and a church is built. That's you guys showing up in the other boats to help reel in the fish. And we need everybody on board. We need everybody to say, you know what, we're going to be a part. They couldn't do it on their own. They needed help. It's all about teamwork. It's all about unity. It's all about being on the same page and being about the Father's business, which is winning the lost, whether locally or around the world. Verse 8, it says, When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, listen to Jesus' words, don't be afraid. You know, I take those words to heart so often in Honduras. When two hurricanes come through and I'm walking in communities that have been completely devastated and the mud is up to here, I can smell everything that's been killed under the dirt and, and, and you just have that knot in your throat and you want to you wanna cry because of all that you're seeing and you just say, hear the voice of the Lord, don't be afraid. When God tells you to build a church or, or build a Bible school or build a school for deaf kids and, and, and you, you, you think, how's it going to happen? You hear the voice of the Lord saying, don't be afraid. And the same thing is in, in your life with whatever you're going through. Maybe you have a prodigal son, a prodigal daughter that's far off from the Lord and just hear the voice of the Lord. Don't be afraid. Keep praying. Keep believing. That God's going to bring them home. Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore. Listen to these last few words of verse 11. Left everything and followed him. And the same goes true for you and me that we must be willing to leave everything to follow him. Whatever he asks, wherever he calls us to go, our answer has to be yes, Lord. Not my will, Lord, but your will. To say the words of the Apostle Paul, I've been crucified with Christ, it's no longer I who live, but Christ in me. That has to be our attitude. That has to be our way of living. They left everything. They followed him. As I get ready to conclude, I want to share one more passage of, of Scripture with you. If you can flip towards the Gospel of John, chapter 21. The Gospel of John, chapter 21. To give you a little bit of context from this verse, from this, this portion of Scripture we're going to read, Jesus has been crucified. He's risen from the dead, but the disciples, they don't quite know it yet. They're, they're, they're kind of down. They're sad. Peter denied Jesus three times. They left everything. Remember, we just read it in Luke. They left everything to follow Jesus now Jesus has been killed. They've been, he's been crucified. They don't know what to do. They don't know what's going to happen in life. They're, 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 they're confused. They're thinking to themselves, man, we left everything to follow this guy, and now he's dead. What, what's going to happen? And it's really a, a, what I like to call a deja vu moment for Peter. When I say deja vu, that's, you know, that's fr French for seeing something that you've already seen. Have you ever had a deja vu moment? It kind of spooks you, kind of freaks you out a little bit. And Peter, he has one of those moments. Listen to what it says, in, starting in verse 1. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And in this way, he showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Verse 3. 
Simon Peter said to them, listen to what Simon tells the others, I am going fishing. Remember, they had left fishing behind. They had left their old way of doing things behind. They had left their old lifestyle behind. They left it all to follow Jesus. And in and, 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 and the middle of their despair, in the middle of, of their world being turned upside down, in the middle of, uh, of the sadness, Peter, he says, I'm going fishing. I'm going back to what I did before. I'm going back to doing things the way that I think is best. I'm going back to my old way of living. He said, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we are going with you also. They went out, immediately got into the boat, and that night, listen to the words, and that night they caught nothing. That's why I say it's a deja vu moment for him, because when was the last time they fished all night and caught nothing? I can just imagine that, that amongst themselves, they begin to talk, right? They begin to talk, and they're, they're kind of spooked. They're like, man, guys, you remember the last time we fished all night? Remember we fished and fished, and we didn't catch anything. Remember we were on shore cleaning our, our nets, and Jesus showed up, and he said, hey, guys, push out into deep water. Throw the nets out again, and we obeyed him. Do you guys remember? And when we did it, we, we, remember the miracle? It was so big to catch. Our nets began to break and the other boats had to show up to help us. Do you guys remember? That night they caught nothing. But when the morning had come, Jesus stood on the shore. I love those words. Jesus stood on the shore. When the morning had come, friends, the morning's coming. And Jesus is standing on the shore. And I love that in our own lives, when we go back to doing things the way we think is best, after serving the Lord for a time, we say, you know what? I'm going to do my own thing. We kind of go off on our own. Even sometimes after experiencing God's power and anointing and, and His presence, even after being used by Him and Sometimes we drift away and we go back to doing things in our own strength, in our own power, relying on ourselves and what we know and who we are. And we get full of our pride and, 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 and we go out and in the middle of all of our craziness, the morning comes and Jesus is standing on the shore of our life. And he's not mad at us. He's not angry with us. He's not pointing his, feet, his finger at us and saying, what's wrong with you, Zach? Why do you do that? He's not yelling at me. Jesus stood on the shore, and, he, and yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. And listen to what Jesus says in verse 5. Then Jesus said to them, Children, have you any food? They answered him, No. And he said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast, and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. I love that Jesus... He wasn't done showing up in the lives of the disciples. He wasn't done using them. He hadn't, hadn't thrown them to the side and said, I'm done with you guys. And, and it's the same thing with us. He doesn't just throw us to the side and say, I'm not going to use you anymore. I'm not going to use your life for my glory. No, he says, hey, I'm here. I want to do the miraculous through your life again. I want to show up in supernatural ways through your life. I want to use you to reach the lost around the world. Here I am. Here I am. I'm going to ask you just to close your Bibles and stand to your feet as we conclude this morning. Father, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you, God, for your goodness in our lives. Thank you, Lord, that you want to make us fishers of men. You want us to reach the lost everywhere we go. Father, we don't want to stay on the shore. But we want to cast out into deep waters, Lord. We want to push out into deep waters where the lost are. This morning, right where you are with your eyes closed and your heads bowed, just lift your hands to God and say, God, make me a fisher of men. 
Maybe you're here this morning and you've never given your life to Christ. Right there, your seat. Just simply call out to God and say, Jesus, I need you. Save me. Just simply tell him, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I want to follow you, Lord. Maybe you're here and you say, God, I know you're calling me to do this. I know you're directing me towards this. I, I know what you're speaking towards me, Lord. And Just fill me with your presence so that I can push out into deep water and be used by you. Just tell that to the Lord this morning, God. Help me to push out into deep water. I want to be used by you. I don't want to stay on shore, Lord. I don't want to stay where it's comfortable, God. I hear your voice this morning saying, do not be afraid, Lord. I hear you, Lord. Father, I thank you in advance for the harvest of souls that's going to be one for you, Lord. Here in Chino, Lord. Here in this state, God. Here in this country and around the world, God. Because you're raising up a generation that in the middle of their tiredness, in the middle of their struggles, in the middle of their imperfections, it's going to push out into deep water, Lord. It's going to go after the lost. Thank you, Jesus, for your word this morning. Lord, open up our spiritual eyes to what's happening around us, to the lost that are around us, Lord. Give us opportunities this week to reach those that don't know you. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in this place and in our hearts. In your precious name. Amen. Show them your appreciation one more time. And you may be seated. You may be seated. You know, I, I just want to say to the Ricks family that uh, we're grateful to be associated with you and the work that God is doing. You know, when I see a young man and a young lady and I see your beautiful children, I can't help but think, you know, most people live for the American dream and you have responded to God's dream. and You've gone to Honduras and uh, we're so grateful for you. And uh, you're my hero. You really are. I mean, I love, I love first responders and... I, I, love, I love police officers, I, I love firemen, but I'll tell you what, there's no one like a missionary. I love pastors, but missionaries that say, I'll, I'll put everything aside and I'll go, God, wherever you want me to go. That is an amazing thing. That is a powerful thing. You don't hear that often, but uh, we love you and I want to pray for you before, uh, before we go any further. And would you please extend your hands forward this way and uh, let's pray for the, for the Ricks family. Father God, we're so grateful. For Zach and, and, and his wife, Lord, and his children. And Father, we're thankful that he responded to you. Lord, in, in, in a world and at times, Lord, that we hear from you, it's easy for us to ignore what we're hearing. But it's admirable, God, when people say, Lord, I hear you. Send me. Here I am. And Father, we pray that you would continue to lead him and guide him, protect him as he goes, as he itinerates here. Father, open doors. Uh, God, that churches would open and love him and and, and give, Lord, to the cause of Christ. And when he goes back to Honduras, Lord, Father, protect him, Lord. Put your hand around him. Anoint him. As he says, thus saith the Lord, as he speaks your word, let it be spoken with power and with anointing and with authority, and that lives would respond to it, Lord. So, Father, we thank you, Father, for them. We ask your blessing upon him, Lord, and his family, God. And Father, we pray, we ask you these things in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. We love you. God bless you. God bless you. Danya, God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your faithfulness. By the way, they're going to be outside. Stop by and see them. Greet them. They, take their prayer card and put it on your refrigerator. And listen, pray for them. When you see it, you know, prayer isn't you have to go get in your closet. And that's true. But when you pass by your refrigerator, you see it, that, that magnet, say, Lord, I remember the Rixes. Bless them. Bless their their ministry, bless their family, bless their children. Protect them, Lord, from all that, the dangers that, that people face. Let me send you off with the blessing. And my desire is that God would bless you. And that God would make his face shine upon you. 
grant you his peace and his favor upon your life. And you're coming in and you're going out. And I want to remind you something that we learned today. You know what? You are a fisher of men. There are people out in your surroundings, in your circle of friends, in your circle of influence that need a, a lifeline. They need some hope. And you have hope. You have the gospel. Share it with them. Tell them. You know what? There is hope. Things can turn around. God can change things around. Because we're living in times where people don't believe anything good can happen. But we serve a God that is a good God. A miracle working God. Amen? Do you believe that? Say amen.